Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander and I am so glad that you're here today. I have a couple special announcements before we dig into today's topic, which I'm super excited about and a little nervous about because it is a little bit vulnerable for me to share all of these stories and all of these things, but it is just so key and so many people have asked me these things and so I want to make sure that I just put that out there into the world. Some of you have heard my story and some of you heard versions of my story and I just kind of give you an overview but it's more about the keys to um, my success so we'll get there in a minute but first I want to make sure that you know you are personally invited to the Facebook group and the way you join our Facebook group other Amazon sellers they're just like you people that are curious people that have been there a long time people that are just starting advanced to beginner there's no uh, wrong answer there but you do need a code word to get in because we don't like spammers and craziness we wanted to make sure that you understand what our Facebook group is about and that you are willingly wanting to be there and that means that you watched a show listen to an episode and you have a code word your code word Word is gratitude. So to join the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. And with the code word gratitude, we'll get you in the Facebook group. So I'm glad to see you there. Speaking of the Facebook group and speaking of all of you, I'm so, so happy about this week. This is our first annual student appreciation week. And we should have called it like fan appreciation, student appreciation. This is the week where we just want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate the fact that you're, you're a loyal listener, you're a loyal student, you're learning, you're growing. And we want to highlight all of your success stories and highlight what you guys have been doing to um, carve out a little piece of the world for your own self. So I am celebrating you this week. I'm so excited. And there's going to be success stories and shout outs, over a thousand dollars of giveaways. And it ends with a very special live event where you get to ask me anything live about selling on Amazon. I'm so excited. Y'all know I love live. You know, I love to answer questions. I'm just going to be so excited about this. You must register for the live event and you must be present at the live event in order to win one of the amazing prizes. And I'm telling you, there are tons of them. Um, June 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern is the time. So hopefully mark your calendars right now. Write, write that down. June 11th, you're busy. For once, you can be busy and you can do something in plan. So go to mommyincome.com slash ask me anything and that's where you can get the registration in order to join me so you're going to ask for your name and your email and uh, your burning question that you want answered of course you can come and answer ask more questions live but we want to know ahead of time what your questions are going to be and i'm just super excited about it mommyincome.com slash ask me anything i'm so excited to be able to celebrate each and every one of you for all that you have done all your support that you've ever given to mommy income make sure you watch our social watch your inbox because you're going to get all kinds of goodies in there as well. So pay attention because we're celebrating you this week with Student Appreciation Week. Now, I want to get to the conversation, right? The, the conversation that always happens. We all get into these conversations all the time. Um, when we go places, well, I know under COVID-19 and under all the different quarantines that we've all been under lately, maybe we haven't had as many conversations. Perhaps they're all just on Zoom. But the reality is, you know, that conversation when it starts with, you know, hey, what do you do? You know, when you first meet someone and, you know, that's just the first exchange. It seems to, to happen every single time we have conversations with people that we don't know. It's always, hey, what do you do? Or, you know, what do you do for a living? All these different things. I've had it a million times and so have you. Birthday parties, church, networking groups, gatherings, even with extended friends and family you haven't seen in a while at some sort of holiday, you know? Do you, it, the one I get all the time too is, oh yeah, you're doing the Amazon. Like, how's that Amazon thing going, you know? Or do you still do that Amazon thing? It's kind of, seems like a little bit of a brush off almost like that, that little Amazon thing that happens over here in the corner in the background. And <clears throat> I always laugh because um, I just, I, I do kind of chuckle. It's like, oh, okay. It always ends up turning to another elephant in the room, which I'll get to in just a second. But the reality is what happens is, you know, I start telling a story about Amazon and, oh yeah, it, we do wholesale bundles. It's just great. You know, it really is, you know, we have a great team and all these different things. And like, 
oh, the elephant in the room comes with this um, <clears throat> rather invasive question, if you will. Um, so can you really make decent money selling stuff on Amazon? It cracks me up because it's almost like as invasive as you would ask somebody like a, a heart surgeon. Oh, you know, are you, are you cracking seven figures doing that thing? Like, you know, just wondering. I know, I know it seems kind of silly, but the reality is we don't usually go around asking people, you know, how much money they make or, you know, what's their revenue generation? <laughs> It's not usually your networking question, right? But I'm not really offended by it. Once I start telling the story about Amazon and how successful it is, the very next follow-up question I hear from people is usually they have some sort of interest, right? You know, if they're asking, can you make decent money doing that? Chances are they might be considering it for themselves. They might think it's something that's for them. And so I just always, I always end up getting this question as well. Like, oh, well, what's the secret? You know, you've, you've done seven figures in revenue and, you know, you keep growing and what's the secret? The truth is there isn't a secret, but there are some key things that you need to learn and practice in order to have success in anything, whether it's an online Amazon business, whether it's a regular business, your job, whether you're trying to lose weight, any sort of thing that you want to be successful at. There are some really key things that I think have marked my journey over time that I want to be able to share with you. Now, podcast listeners, listen up because this also has a presentation with it. And I want to make sure that if you, if you're a visual person that you want to jump on the YouTube channel and watch the episode instead of listening, because there's a, there's a presentation here and I don't want you to miss out on some of these visual cues because as I'm a visual person, I really connect with um, word pictures and words. Of course, me, I'm so wordy and I have all kinds of words for you, but I really do connect words with pictures. And so some of these things have just this visual grasp that I think that is really important for this particular episode. So if you can catch it on YouTube instead of the podcast, that would be great. But if not, just tune in and stay focused because these key things um, were very key for me, for my personal development, for my business growth and development. And I really think that it's worth sharing with you all. So this is the three keys to e-commerce success, my story of foreclosure to seven figures. This is the three keys to e-commerce success, my story of foreclosure to seven figures. This is what I thought my future was. My forever home, it was pool parties, backyard barbecues, family gatherings, memories, and a place that we wanted to welcome our grandchildren. A fun neighborhood full of families and extra room for my eBay business at the time. This was a home that we looked for and I fell in love with right away. And I was very excited about it. A lot of people house hunt for all kinds of different times. I didn't house hunt for very long. This one had a pool, you guys, a pool. You know, I'm a summer person and I love the summertime and pool and so do my kids. So this was going to be our forever home. But almost overnight, we lost it. It was ripped out from under us. In 2010, a week after my third child was born, we received a phone call that changed everything. My husband was injured at work. He was gonna need surgery, physical therapy, and would probably be off work for a year or maybe forever. While he was encountering this battle for workman's compensation, the only income that we had was my very small Amazon and eBay business. I was selling books on Amazon and I was still selling on eBay and it was a small business. It surely wasn't enough to feed a family of five. In the months following the accident, there were financially, we were financially ruined. Ended up losing our home, our forever home, the home that we wanted to raise our grandchildren in. We lost our home to foreclosure. Despite the fight, despite all the different things that we went through, we were really worried. What were we gonna do? How would we survive? Was there any hope at all? That was then. And this is now. This is my family at Disney. 
and this is me teaching other people how to sell things on Amazon all over the country. This is my husband and I at an all-inclusive Jamaican vacation in February of last year. It was so much fun. So much of dreams went around that vacation. And this is our boat. Her name is Someday Baby. That's a, a song that came out a long, long time ago when my husband and I um, were first married and we used to joke about that. That was like our theme song that, you know, it's, it's by Keith Urban. So it's actually called Better Life. So I always call it Someday Baby because that's the, the theme of the song. But the reality in the song is it talks about, you know, one day we're going to have it all. We're going to have everything. We don't have a whole lot now, but, you know, we have these, these big dreams. And so that this was named, our boat was named after that song because this is now. And this is our year end revenue for 2019. $1.23 million sold on Amazon by me and my team. Now, I'm not showing you these things to brag. I'm not telling you these things like, woohoo, look at me to brag. I'm showing you these pictures and talking about the story because there's hope. I'm showing you that there's hope in any situation. I'm proving to you that change is possible, that no matter where you find yourself right now, that this doesn't have to be the end of the story. The glimmer of hope stays alive if you keep it that way, if you dream big but step really small. The glimmer of hope in my life stayed afloat with my e-commerce business. We had this tiny little business and this tiny little ray of hope that maybe someday we would own a house again, maybe a new forever home. We weren't really sure. So maybe you're in a not so glamorous situation, maybe that we found ourselves in. Perhaps you're working from home and you're working on your business and it was going well, but maybe you find yourself stuck or broke or wondering where the hope is for your story. I want to share what has gotten me from the depths of foreclosure that caught us completely off guard to a thriving seven figure business, to a new home, to a happy family, and to things we never even dreamed were possible. I want to share with you the three keys of my success in hopes that they will be the keys to your success as well. The first key is that growth is not possible without consistent steps. Consistent action is so important. It's actually crazy to think that you would get this when your, your effort looks more like this. If you want a steady curve upward, and yet your effort looks like a squiggly up and down line with a couple of flat lines, and then a little squiggly here because you got some motivation and then moved it back up again, what do you think you're gonna, your result is going to be from that? Does anyone else struggle with being consistently inconsistent? <laughs> I call myself consistently inconsistent in my early days. What happens when you have too many inconsistencies in your life? Um, you're going to get inconsistent results. I used to do business randomly when I needed extra money, when I needed my kids to go to, uh, you know, music lessons or things like that. And it still was hardly enough to make ends meet. I wanted and liked the flexibility of working from home and having my own e-commerce business and flipping things on eBay. But flexibility is awesome as long as you have the results you want. I was not much of a planner. I liked my flexibility and my freedom as many entrepreneurs, as many of you guys entrepreneurs are. I don't like to be told what to do. I don't like to have a boss. I randomly put my business together and my results looked a lot random too. 
the reality is I would randomly go buy products to sell when I needed money. When sales were getting a little low, it's, oh, I better, you know, sell a few things or I needed some extra funds to pay for unexpected expenses. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it always seemed to sneak up on us when our vehicles needed tires. And if you were barely making your ends meet and all of a sudden you need to spend, you know, $500 or $800 and how my, my husband has a truck and we don't even talk about how much truck tires are. <laughs> When you have these unexpected expenses that you didn't plan for or can't afford even, what are you going to do? You can't build up consistent business if you're not acting consistently. I had no plan. I had no process. But that all changed when we got that call and my husband got injured and there was nothing else to do. My family was now dependent on this income to keep a roof over our heads and food in our mouth. I had to become more careful. I had to leave flexibility behind for a bit of a schedule, a self-imposed schedule, but a schedule nonetheless. I had to grow into being consistent. And I had a really good motivator. When all of a sudden you don't have any income coming in and you've got a way to earn some cash, that can be a pretty heavy motivator. I'm gonna be real with you here. If you aren't where you want to be, you haven't earned flexibility. Instead, you need to practice consistency. If you want better, you have to do better. You have to be better. But I got to tell you, not all consistent action is beneficial. What does consistency look like? I'm going to talk to you about bricks, okay? I love I love word pictures. I love pictures. I love analogies. And for again, for your podcast listeners who can't actually see this image, um, just picture a pile. So picture one brick first. One brick alone is just a small little brick. Just like one step in the right direction seems small and inconsistent and insignificant. Just think about one brick. Now, if you take a brick and every day you throw it out your front door, you did put some effort in, right? Every day. Even if you were consistent every single day and you got up and you picked a brick and you tossed it into the front yard, you would have a big pile of bricks. After you ran out of bricks, you would have a big pile of bricks. Random action yields random results. If you're inconsistent, you're pile is going to be inconsistent. You throw a brick here and you forget a couple days and you throw a brick there. Do you have anything cohesive? No, you just have a pile of bricks. You've moved it from one place to another, but you have a pile of bricks. As you can see, not all consistent action is beneficial. But if you're consistent and intentional, you can build something quite different. What if you had an idea of what you were building? Say a path, you wanted to build a brick path. And every day you laid a brick down, every single day, just one brick. Daily, consistently, intentionally, in a pattern. You would have something like this. Not the most beautiful path you've ever seen in the world, but a path nonetheless, and a patterned path. Now you see some of the outliers on the other side, a little bit of bricks that didn't make the cut. Perhaps they were cracked or broken or something, but intentionally, consistently, every day, you put one brick as part of a pattern. Small steps add up. Small, consistent steps. Big, consistent steps add up. The key is consistency. Do you know that there's about 170 bricks in this path, including all the little outliers that didn't make the cut into the path? 170. So that means if you took daily action, you could have a path in less than six months with very little effort. Think about the effort that's involved in picking up a brick. Maybe it's from the pile that you <laughs> previously tossed out the front yard. But say you've got a pile of bricks. Maybe you ordered them, they dumped them in your front yard, and now you have to move the bricks or backyard, wherever. But there's about 170 bricks, I counted them in this image. What if every day you picked up a brick from that pile and you laid it down consistently and intentionally in a specific pattern? 
one brick. How much time do you think that would take you? How much effort is really involved in getting up, picking up a brick from one place and putting it strategically in another place? The amount of effort and input is significantly small, but it's consistent. And no matter what, if you did that every day, maybe even skip in a few days, those are the little outlier bricks that maybe didn't make the cut, the days you were tired and just tossed the brick towards the path, hoping it would land in the right place. This is not how we grow. This is not how we do business. This is not how we get the results we want. But small steps add up to big results. Action, no matter how small, is still action. So say for 170 straight days, you picked up a brick, from one pile and you strategically place it in another. In less than six months, you have a really nice path that you made out and guess it didn't cost you a lot of time or effort. It might've been two minutes. Step out, grab the brick, put it in the place and go. But then you end up with a more beautiful result, much better than the pile of consistently tossing bricks into the pot. So, what does it take to be consistent? What does a consistency actually look like? Honestly, it takes intention and planning. When I got serious, when I had no choice, I got serious about my Amazon business because it was the only income our family had. And I had to get really serious. So when you start to get serious and you start to plan something, you'll see the results. Are you gonna see them the same day? Probably not, but you will see results. So I got serious and I got consistent about my business. Instead of the up and down, willy nilly type of actions I was taking based on, oh, I kinda need some extra money right now or running out of inventory, you know, randomly, I made a plan. Now, honestly, guys, I am not a planner by nature. This is against my being, I am, fly by the seat of my pants, last minute, a quick start, a kind of loosey-goosey. I like my flexibility. I like to do things when in the moment I'm emotional and I, I work a lot on feeling and I really like to operate that way. But when the rubber meets the road and you've got to do things differently, it's really important to be consistent. So I buckled down and made a schedule. Every Thursday, I sourced my products to sell on Amazon all day long until all my inventory budget was completely spent. Then every single Monday, without fail, I spent that time shipping in the products. I spent the other time doing product research and making connections with people and learning new skills. I put it on a calendar. Everybody knows me now, today, today's day and age. If you want anything from me, there's two things that you need. You either need to put a sticky note on my desk, hello, my family, they need to know that like, how do you get mom to do anything or remember something? Put a sticky note on my desk, I will see it, I will read it, and I will act upon it. Or get on my calendar. If it's not on my calendar, I might as well forget it. And I have like multiple calendars, but it's gotta be like on my digital. And if it's not on my digital and my paper, oh no, I'm scared. So putting it on a calendar planning the time ahead of time. Not, not every hour, not every single day, not complete times, but I had to get serious. And so Thursdays were spending days, inventory spending, and Mondays were shipping. And then another day of the week would be learning new things and taking a course or a phone call with a coach or anything like that. Not a single week has gone by since that house foreclosed on that I have not listed and shipped products. Hear that? and hear it again. Not a single week has gone by that there hasn't been product shipped in or product listed, whether by myself or a team member, not a single time. You cannot sell what's not listed. You cannot sell what's sitting in a closet or on the floor or still in a catalog. You've got to be consistent. You can't expect consistent sales without consistent steps. I mean, we say this out loud, we think about that, but it sounds really ludicrous when we say it, but how many of us, hello, me included, how many of us have complained about low sales or this or that when we really haven't put the work in to see the sales that we're expecting, whether it's weekly or daily or even monthly, doing things consistently is key. I don't care if you only ship things once a month, but once a month on that day, in that time, 
ship your products in. Daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it is, be consistent. You owe it to yourself to be consistent and your results will thank you. So planned, careful, consistent action can look even better. Whether you're stepping small or stepping a bit bigger because you wanna be all in, if you're planned and you're intentional and you're consistent, you'll get a little bit of a result that maybe looks like this instead. This is a beautifully built staircase out of brick. Same bricks, right? We still have bricks. Maybe these are a little bit nicer bricks. I don't know. It's a really nice stairway. But this kind of result, this kind of building takes planned, intentional, consistent action. Now, could you build a staircase like that in a day? You probably could, maybe with a two or three people, maybe really good um, bricklayers could probably do that. But the reality is not without a plan, not without knowing. Look at the straight lines there. Look at the, the, the careful ways that the rounded bricks are in the front and the flatter ones are in the back. This is planned, careful, consistent action. Speed is not as important here. It's more about consistency and intentionality. Being intentional. So what does it take? This is one of the keys. This is one of the most important keys of, of being successful at anything. This is one of the really important keys that I had to learn, cutting my teeth and the hard way, that being consistent is the only way to get the results that you're looking for. So what does it take to get this kind of results? Do you want the pile of bricks? Do you want a path? Nothing wrong with all these things, but you have to decide what you want. Do you want more of a carefully planned path or do you want a gorgeous crafted staircase like this? Because what does it take? It takes a goal or a desired result. You need to know, uh, people shy away from the word goal for some reason, but there's not a whole lot of English language words that are similar to goal. But if you have a desired result, maybe it's retirement, maybe it's quick, quitting your nine to five, maybe it's a certain number in your bank account, financial freedom, whatever that goal is, you need a goal. You need to know where you're headed, a result that you want, whether it's small or big, you need to know where you're aiming. That's like the difference between the pile of bricks and the path or the stairs. Whether you want just a simple path or an extravagant staircase, you need to know what you want. And then you need a plan of what it will take to get there. What needs to happen? Consistent, intentional action is aligned, it must be aligned with your goal. Whether you're taking really small steps, like I've taken in my life, really small steps to get to where I'm going, or big all-in steps, you need to have the plan and you need to be consistent. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to have the next step figured out and then take consistent action to complete that. And then the next step. You don't need a 10-year plan. You don't need, I, I tell you, and honestly, I've never even made a five-year plan. I struggle to make a six-month plan still to this day, but I know what my next step is. I know what I want, I know what I'm aiming at, and I know what the next step in front of me is. I know what this week's priorities are. I've learned to be consistent because the results will follow. And when you get the result that you want and you realize it's from your consistency, it becomes so much easier. Eventually you get to a place where things are easier. That's only after you make the necessary changes and start to be consistent. Another thing, growth is not possible without change. Change is required for growth. You have to be willing to pivot and not quit. Why is growth not possible without change? Because what got you right where you are now will not get you where you're going. You're going to have to learn new skills. You're going to have to leave some old baggage behind. You're going to have to turn and pivot and change. Consistent steps, small changes yield big results. It's over time. It's like compound interest. At the beginning, when you put money in the bank and you want to earn in interest on it, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. But as you're consistently putting money into that same bank account and it's earning interest while you're not doing anything except making deposits, in the beginning, probably even in the first five years, you're not seeing a whole lot of compound interest. But over time, 
if you keep adding that money, all of a sudden your dividends start to grow and your money starts working for you. That could be a whole nother episode of talking about finances and compound interest, all these things, but the same thing applies to your action steps in business. Not expecting a result immediately, but definitely expecting it over time and making changes. That is the key thing. So one of the key changes that I had made in my life and in my business specifically was slowly adding things to the plate. So the first thing that I added when I was first selling, I was selling on eBay. If you see this chart here, I started on eBay. I was thrifting, sold anything I could get my hands on here and there inconsistently selling stuff on eBay. Then I discovered Amazon and started selling books on Amazon. And then there was a game changer. I call the game changer retail arbitrage. Um, I don't know. I still to this day don't exactly remember how I got connected, but I got connected to a radio show where Chris Green and Kat Simpson hosted FBA radio. This is before live streaming. It was like online audio streaming live. Um, and it connected with them. And then I remember one specific at a specific show I was listening to with, with Chris Green and Kat. And Chris gave out his personal phone number. And he was like, hey, if you got questions, you know, give me a call. I'm happy to answer any Amazon questions for you. And I was still pretty new. I was just selling books. And I remember as I was scanning the books and putting the, you know, labels on the back of them, I was listening to this radio program. And I thought, oh my word, what happens if I what happens if I learn from this guru, this, this expert who is way ahead of the game and knows what, you know, the, their experience is. If I could just take that phone call, make that phone call, what would I ask? What would I do? How could that change? Connecting with others who are selling online is super important. Connecting with others that are where you want to be is so, so important. Getting a mentor, getting a coach, getting educated on something in order to grow. You are not going to grow if you don't learn and change. And that's something you need to do. So changing, I was still doing books. Retail arbitrage was brand new for me and I was really clueless at what the real parameters of that were, how you do it, what tools do you need? I had so many questions. So I wrote them all down and I mustered up the courage to call that phone number. I thought he's not gonna answer, it's gonna go to voicemail. What am I gonna say? All these things. He, did end up answering and I was able to chat with him for about 35 minutes or so. And what I learned from that single phone call, I grew my business 10 times. That was a huge jump. The second significant change in business from we first changed the way we sourced products. Instead of doing books, we did books and added retail arbitrage. The change is significant not quitting, not changing to a different business, just adding to what was already there. The second change that was super helpful and our pivotal to our growth was hiring help. My mom, for all of you guys that don't know, is my Amazon FBA business partner. Taking on a partner was super scary, but I knew at that moment how much we could do. Was I, was I terrified? Yes. Even though my mom is the greatest person and she's so smart and she learns very quickly and she asks great and amazing questions. I could never have predicted how awesome she would be at this. But at the time I was doing retail arbitrage and she said, Oh, you're shopping for a living. I want to shop for a living too. That would be fun. And she did double duty for almost a year and a half before she quit her full-time job to do this. But I also, you have to make sacrifices. As you can see on this chart, this white line represents the, the downfall, the, um, the cuts, if you will, the sacrifices that you need to make in order to make that next jump. You see that on there. One of the biggest things that we had to decide on and do in order to grow was to hire help. What does that mean? It costs money. Hiring help costs money, right? I took an immediate 50% pay cut, but I also immediately doubled the output and effort, which led to another eight to 10 times growth in a year. This is not a joke. This is not made up numbers. Eight to 10 times of growth with two people doubling the output, doubling the work. So how long did it take to make up that money? Not too long, but it did require sacrifice and change. Change is hard. And the most recent change that we made in our business 
to free up time and to focus on money-making tasks was to hire a prep center. So a prep center is where you're sending in your Amazon FBA goods to someone else so that they can process, pack, ship, and get it off to Amazon and label it while you're doing things that actually make you money. Did you know that packing and shipping, whether you're doing Merchant Fulfill or eBay or anything else, those are not money-making tasks. Anybody can do them. I've hired my children to do that. That does not make your business money. What makes your business money is focusing on things like sourcing profitable products and doing research and keeping up on the back end of your business so that you're not losing money and there's holes in your financial bucket. This freed up more time, but was it scary? Absolutely. Every change that we made had some fear involved in it, but we knew that if we could take that off of our plate, we could grow again. And what did this give us, this next change? Look at the chart. Adding a prep center grew us to where we are today. We got location freedom. We never had to worry about sending in inventory or receiving it or being home when a pallet was delivered or you know signing for our packages. We weren't stuck at a specific location. We didn't have a warehouse where we had to you know have a lease agreement and pay all the bills. We can work anywhere where there's internet. So it freed us up to be able to do what we do best, which is building wholesale bundles, looking at catalogs, picking proper products to sell. Those are the money-making tasks. There's always gonna be plateaus. There's always going to be ups and downs, as you can see with the white line on the chart. Those are the ups and downs, the differences. But the, the color blocks you see are the levels of growth that happened when those sacrifices were made. My, the most significant ones were adding my mom as a partner and taking that pay cut and going, wait, I mean, that shows almost the bottom of the barrel there, you guys. But then it goes all the way back up because we took time to keep going and keep building and we added bundles to the mix and then we added wholesale bundles to the mix and then finally adding that prep center was not as big of a dip as the first dip but then look at the growth since then gave us so much time in order to see growth you need to take consistent steps you need to be willing and available to make changes accept changes and you can't complain about the lack of growth if you won't change your lack of effort. This is just the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm not going to say that it's all sunshines and rainbows. Look at this ups and downs. There is ups and there is downs. And that is just the way it is. But lack of effort comes from a hidden and subtle source. I've mentioned it a couple of times and I'm going to mention it again. That leads us to the biggest thing that holds us back, and it's the third key to success. Fear, conquering fear, makes room for more growth. You wanna grow your business? Conquer fear. Okay, easy for you to say, Kristen. Um, fear is not in control. And I have a method that's really going to help you think through these things. Not going to be perfect at it. I still have fear of my own. As a matter of fact, today I even had a fear moment. My fear moment was resolved in recording this episode. I kept putting it off and putting it off and realized I was procrastinating. And then I had to stop and I had to do what we're about to go through right now. I still do this every single time I face fear. And yeah, sometimes we get caught up and we do the things we're not supposed to be doing and we procrastinate. I call it procrastinate bake. Every time I find myself in the kitchen baking, I'm usually putting off something that I should have been doing. <laughs> procrastinate baking. Um, but the reality is fear doesn't have to be in control. And one of the things that we need to consider is trusting the facts and not the feelings. And I am preaching to myself here, you guys, because I am a feely person. I am a number two on the Enneagram. I have my heart on my sleeve. I am very emotional. That's just how I roll and how I operate. So of course, my feelings are super intense. It's either super high fear and super low this, and I just, I juggle with it all the time. But the number one thing that stops us from growing and changing is fear. It's not capital. A lot of people answer that question. What's the number one thing you need in order to grow in your business? I need money. I need capital. The reality is that the number one thing that stops us from growing and changing and getting to the goals that we have is fear. 
So what actually is fear? Let me define this for you because I think this is so pivotal in me understanding fear at some point was like, why do we have this? It's perceived danger. Fear is perceived danger. We think something bad will happen and then it will bring pain. It will bring emotional pain, physical pain, embarrassment, financial ruin. We visit health problems. Everything we do, there's some fear around it because we have this perceived danger. Now, fear is a natural God-given mechanism we have in our bodies to um, avert fear. Knowing that you're at the edge of a cliff, that's that natural fear you have of you could fall to your death. That is a very real thing and a very real fear. Um, but then there's other things that fear trickles in and we have these doubts and we have these things that happen because we are perceived fear, perceived danger all around us. It will bring pain or, and we'll be embarrassed and so we just better not start there. We can, we think up the worst and dream up all kinds of yeah, buts and what ifs. Yeah, but this, what if this? Yeah, but this, what if this? We worry and fear that danger and harm is going to come. Now, I am going to throw myself directly under the bus here because we all got fears and they're real people. I understand that they're real. So I'm not discounting fear at all. Um, this is me right here. I am deathly afraid of spiders deathly afraid. I watched arachnophobia when I was a kid and now I have like spider PTSD. I think that every little spider, whether it's little or big, is going to come and eat me. They're ugly. They're gross. They will literally eat me and kill me. That's just what I think. This is how I feel based on a previous movie viewing and experience that I had. Will I ever get over this? So if you look at this image, this is what is probably real, which is the leaf picture here with this little daddy long leg type spider. <laughs> the picture on the right is literally how I feel when I see the spiders. It's, I think that there's a giant hairy tarantula that's going to eat my face off and I'm going to die. So we all have real fear, whether we're perceived danger, whether it's real danger, these things can actually happen. So what are some of the fears in your business? Take some time to really think about the things that you're afraid of and see if any of these actually resonate with you. What if I lose all of my investment? What if my items don't sell? What if I violate a policy and get shut down? What if the fees keep eating up all of my profits? What if someone hijacks my listing? What if I can't get enough profitable inventory? What if I make big mistakes and lose everything? The struggle is real, fear is real, but it's also conquerable. How do we conquer these feelings of fear, this perceived dangers, the what ifs and the yeah buts? We learn to trust the facts and not the feelings. Fear is a feeling. It is a real feeling, but to, it, it keeps you and holds you back. To keep it from holding you back, you have to challenge it. You have to challenge that fear. So you feel it, you recognize it, and then you do a couple of things. So this is what I do when I'm thinking about fear. Just before this episode, I had these bouts of fear and doubt, you know, the, that self-doubt that comes in, that imposter syndrome that says, you've told your story a million times, no one wants to hear it again, you've said all these things already, no one's going to watch, no one's going to listen, no one's going to leave a review, no one cares anymore, um, these things aren't helpful, you talk too much, okay, I'm being super vulnerable with you right now, which is part of my fear at starting this episode. So trusting the facts and not the feelings. So this is the, the protocol, and this is written in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. So making sure that you um, check that out. But this is what I go through when I have these fears. Trusting the facts, not the feelings. And these are the questions that you can ask yourself when you go through these things. What is true about what I'm facing right now? What is true? What is the actual truth? Not the perceived danger, but what is the actual truth that I'm feeling? What, am, what is true about what I'm facing? So let's go back to the spiders for just a second. When you see the little picture of the daddy long leg, and then you see the big, black, hairy tarantula on the lady's face there, it's really, you know, that's definitely a black and white kind of image. It's very contrasting. But the one is like what's actually real and the other one's actually how I feel. And so marrying those together, what is true about what I'm facing? What's true about the spiders is this, this little daddy long leg is not going to hurt me and it is not a tarantula. It's not going to eat my face off. It's that it, it, could it bite me? 
perhaps, if it lands on me and stays there long enough. But then what are the positive outcomes? That's the other thing that you can think about. So going to your business, going to talk about some of those things we just covered, because I know that I know that one of those resonated with you. What if I lose all of my investment? What if my stuff doesn't sell? What if my bundle doesn't sell? All these things. What are the positive outcomes if you actually attempt the thing that you're attempting? What is the, what is the thing that you will attempt? What's the worst that can happen if you try it? Will you actually die? Like that is a story I'm always telling with my daughter when she came home she, from school one day and she was complaining about this or that. I think she was in middle school or something. And, you know, just little petty stuff was important to her. But like to me, I'm kind of rolling my eyes and she's just complaining about all these little petty things. And I'm like, but did you die though? Like get over it. You had to dress up for gym class and get sweaty. Like, did you die? And so we just kind of laughed because it was like that reality check of like, yeah, these things are kind of miserable, but did you die though? No. So what, you got to think about these things. What is true about what you're facing? What are the positive outcomes if you actually attempt what you're afraid of? What's the worst that can happen? These are all things that we want to entertain. And are you going to die? What if the worst thing does happen? And can you recover from it? Yes. Yes, you can. I recovered from foreclosure. I recovered from a couple awful, other awful things in life, and so will you, and so can you. But the biggest and best question is, how will my life change if I attempt this despite what I'm feeling? What if I just go for it anyway? What are the positive results that can happen if in my life, if I make this change and I just do the thing? What about this one? If you're bent on the negative side, which is totally cool, everybody has different personalities, what happens if you don't do it? What doesn't change if you stay stuck in fear? Because let me tell you this, whether you're fearful or whether you try something new and step out of your comfort zone, both of those things are hard. It's hard to maintain constant fear and try to stay in a comfort zone because there's always gonna be things that are gonna challenge your comfort zone and you have to constantly battle the fear and either stay in the fear or you have to face the new thing. Both of them are gonna be hard. Choose what's hard and what will be worth it to you. Find the facts, trust what's true, and ask more questions. The other thing I like to do is flip the script. This is my favorite thing when it comes to these things. Instead of worrying about the worst, dream about the result that can happen. Instead of what if, we've already gone through all these what ifs, right? Instead of all the what ifs, what if something goes right? What actually happens if you create a bundle that you're so scared to create because you're not quite sure, even though the data lines up, you're not quite sure what's going to happen here. What happens if it goes right? What happens if it flies off the shelf and you need to get more? What is the best that can happen. So flipping those negative things, you're allowed to stay there, and, but it's like setting up a tent. You set up a tent, you stay there for a time, but then it's time to go home. You pack it up, you put it back, and you go home. So think of the negative thoughts as camping. We're camping. We go there for a while. We're allowed to feel the things. We're allowed to think about the negative stuff. We all do this, but then look at it as temporary. This is camping, I'm going back to my home. I'm gonna pack these negative things up, I'm gonna flip the script around, think about all the positive things, and then go back to my home. So these are the types of things you have to think about and go, what can go right? What can be the good things? Action is the antidote to fear. Action, actually taking action towards something. If you're asking about finding the facts, asking about what is true and what is right, if you take action, it is the opposite of fear. You can actually move in the right direction. It will help you cancel it out. So if you think about certain things. Was there fear around all of this change that I made in my business? Yes, of course there was. There was fear. I had to talk myself into picking up the phone and talking to Chris Green at that moment. Is he going to talk to me? Is he going to think I'm stupid? What if I don't, what if I waste this time? What if I don't get the right answers? What if I don't get the answers that I was hoping for? What if, what if, what if, what if? Fear. But what if I don't? What are the feelings based on? What's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen if I get answers? Hello, 10 times growth from that, that, that phone call. There was also real fear about a prep center. Someone else is going to handle your inventory. 
what are the fear what are the feelings based on they're based on the fears what is the worst that can happen if i don't have the prep center so flipping it around and asking yourself what is true about what you're facing and what can you do differently i've got to ask you this question i want you to just think about it for a minute what is the one thing that you're avoiding in your business because of fear? There's something. There's something you're avoiding because you're afraid. What is that thing? I challenge you to just say it out loud to yourself right now. No one's listening. You're probably walking the dog. You're driving your car. You're doing something like that. Say it out loud. I'm afraid. Blank. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid of whatever that is, say it out loud. And then go through the, the, the questions in your mind. What is true about this? What is true about what I'm facing? What could be the positive outcomes if I push past my fear and I attend to this thing? How will my life change if I attempt this despite what I'm feeling? And then my favorite one. After all that, what is one step that you can take to get closer to what you want. What is just one step? That's one brick of consistency. That's one brick you're laying out there. One step you can take to get closer to that. Action is the antidote to that fear. That fear that's holding you back, taking action can cancel, can cancel that right out. So what are the three keys? The three keys are consistency, and change and conquering fear. That is the key to arriving where I was, the where I am today. From the foreclosure, foreclosed house, for my forever house being foreclosed on, I still miss my pool, I'm just saying. What are the three keys? Consistency, change, and conquering fear. Going from foreclosure to seven figures took all of those things. Was it easy? No, not easy. None of it was easy. There's a lot of late nights. So I would say early mornings, but there's not a whole lot of early mornings in my life. I don't like early mornings. I don't like mornings at all. Thank you very much. Was it easy? No. Was it fast? <laughs> this is my favorite. Honestly, was it fast? No way. From beginning to end, my e-commerce journey is nearly 20 years. From the time I first started on eBay all the way until right now in 2020, it's been nearly 20 years. 17 and a half, 18 and a half. It wasn't easy. Many hurdles along the way. Many mistakes were made. My mindset was challenged. Doors were closed. Money was lost. There were deaths in the family, surgeries injuries, long hospital stays, many 14, 15, 16 hour days. Life, this is life, going through all these different things. Consistency made it possible despite the difficulty. Small changes, small consistent steps and conquering those fears one at a time. Because was it scary? <laughs> Hell yeah, it was scary. I'm just going to be flat out real. All of these things were super scary. Seeing my husband, my husband injured and all of a sudden having all income ripped out from under you. Some of you might be facing that right now today during this COVID-19 coronavirus crisis that we've all been in. You're maybe you thought you could file for unemployment and it didn't come through. Maybe you lost your job and you can't go back to it and there's nothing new. Has this thing scary? Absolutely, yes. I mean, everything is scary, right? All these different things, foreclosures and losing money and making the next step and taking on a 50-50 partner and cutting my salary in half. These are the realities. Spending big money Sending inventory to a prep center, yeah, hell yeah, that was scary. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was scary. But when I got past the hurdle of doing it and doing it scared and doing it anyway and just taking that very next step, the benefits 
are unbelievable because was it worth it? Absolutely, it was worth it. Remember, this is now. The benefits of putting all that work in, the benefits of being consistent, the benefits of embracing change despite the fact that it's hard or we don't want to do it. 1.2 million in sales. What about this? This is me with my first book, published, written, out there, first book. This is now. The foreclosure is no longer my reality because of change and consistency and conquering fear. Again, it's worth it. And I'm sharing this to you again, not to brag, but if you do a job you love and you're consistent at it, and you love the people we are with, and you have a lifestyle that you want with financial benefits, it is worth it to make these changes. I share this with you because I want to give you hope. There is hope. If there was hope for me in our situation, a situation that didn't seem to have an end, it didn't seem to have answers. There's hope for any situation. There's hope for your situation. And it's going to take, you guessed it, consistency, change, and conquering fear. So what is your big dream? Where is it that you want to be? What do you want more of? Which one of these things do you need to implement right now to get you closer to that? If you need help figuring these things out, I am here to help you. Just remember that. Small, consistent, action steps. Any situation can change and any business can grow. To learn more, to get in touch with me, you can go to mommyincome.com to get a copy of Dream Big, Step Small, which a lot of these stories and more in-depth details of how you handle fear and how you make a plan of action and how you reach your goals by taking small steps. Mommyincome.com slash book. You can also get it on Amazon, Dream Big, Step Small. These are my keys to my success, and I believe they can help anyone and everyone in your situations. Thank you for the privilege of letting me share this with you.